If you are a wedding photographer or maybe just a portrait photographer, the likelihood you've had a client come to you and ask you, can you make your photos bright and airy? So today I'm going to be showing you my technique on how to create this beautiful bright and airy color grading effect in your photos using Lightroom Classic. And I'm going to start right now. Right guys, so the very first thing you want to do is go ahead and open Lightroom. Now this particular effect works well with all types of photos, but I specifically found it works really well when applying to either portrait or some more specifically wedding photos. It just works really well with the look. A lot of wedding photographers go for it because it just works. It just is a really, really nice look. It brings out the skin tones and everyone. It just it's one of my favorite effects. So let's go give it a go and see if it works on your photo. So let's go ahead and open up Lightroom. And this is today's sample image. And if you'd like to follow along, go ahead and download the link in the description. Then once you've done that, go ahead over to your develop panel. Then the very first thing you want to do is go to our basics panel. I'm going to go ahead and open that. So we are going to go ahead and leave the white balance alone. We're not going to go ahead and change that in this particular case. But if you are finding it's a bit warm or a bit cool, you can go ahead and change that if you like. The first thing you want to do is go to exposure. Now, bright and airy kind of says it in the name. It's going to be bright. So let's go ahead and increase the exposure by an entire stop. Now, that might look a little bit odd in your photo, but trust me, this should work once we've changed a couple more settings. Then what you want to do is go to your contrast. We're going to add in around 5% contrast there. Then in our highlights, we're going to go ahead and bring those down slightly. Not by much, by about, say, minus 50, but just enough so we can bring back a little bit of the information that you may have clipped while exposing it by an entire stop. Then let's go to our shadows and we'll go ahead and bring those up as well. So let's go ahead and bring those to around about 50% there as well. Very nice. Then what we could do is go to the whites. We could do the same. So we're going to increase the whites, bring those up slightly and bring back a little bit more information in those shadows. We don't want to make it look matty. We don't want to have this matte look. So we're going to do is go to those blacks, just bring them down ever so slightly, just enough. So you've got a little bit, so you've actually got true black within the photo. Then what we could do is go to texture. We're going to add in 10% texture. Now, because this is a portrait photo, and it's what I recommend with all portrait photos, is making sure we reduce the clarity. Not by much, but it will hopefully smooth out any skin tone imperfections that you've got in your portrait or wedding photo. So we're going to go to our clarity here and drop that down by 10%. Then we're going to go to dehaze and add in 5% there. Now in Vibrance, we're going to go ahead and add in 15%, but we are going to leave Saturation alone. And if you do want to know the difference between Saturation and Vibrance, go ahead to the link in the description or the card in the top right hand corner. I've actually made a video on the difference between Saturation and Vibrance. So once we've done that, let's go ahead and close down that Basics panel and let's go ahead down to HSL Color. Now in HSL color, let's go ahead and change the hue first. HSL color is a way of changing your hue, changing your saturation and changing your luminance. And that's three ways of controlling color. Again, if you do want to know more about that, I've actually made a dedicated video. Again, you can find that in the link in the description. So let's go ahead and change hue first. Now in hue, we are going to leave red and orange alone because those are skin tone colors. We don't necessarily want to affect those. So let's jump straight to yellow. And let's go ahead and increase yellow by around 25. This will bring more of that kind of I suppose green more back in the photo. We don't want to make it look too yellow. So I'll add a little bit more green into that. And we can do the same with green. So we increase that by minus 25. Let's increase this to 50. We'll hopefully punch up some of those greens that are actually lost within the grass. Looks a little bit dead. That will hopefully bring that up quite nicely. Then with the aquas, we're going to go ahead and drop that down by around, oh, actually done it straight away, minus 25 there. That will hopefully bring a little bit more aquas and a little bit more tealy look into the sky. You'll find it will bring a bit more change in your photo, but I haven't got a lot of sky in this image, but it will hopefully work with your photo. So once we've done that, we can leave you alone. We don't need to make any more changes. Let's go to saturation next. So in saturation, we want to skin, skip red and skip orange. Again, they are skin tone colors. We don't want to affect those. So let's go straight to yellow. And what we want to do is go to yellow here and we'll drop that by minus 25. And then we'll go to greens and we'll make the biggest change of the day. We're going to go down to minus 50. That will remove some of that saturation that you've found in the background. Again, leaving the skin tones alone. 
found within obviously the foreground and the two models we've got here. Then we'll go to aquas, we're gonna leave that alone, and we're gonna go to our blues here, and we're actually going to increase those by 15. Reason for that, we wanna bring a little bit more color back into the sky. It's already looking quite overcast, and then you can see there's a little bit of blue you can find in the top here, so we'll bring some of that back. And the last thing we'll do is luminance. Now, luminous is going to make the biggest change in this particular case. Reason is, we're creating a bright and airy look. So we're going to increase the illuminance of certain color brands to actually emphasize that look. Just changing the exposure isn't going to affect all images correctly. So actually playing around with HSL color and more specifically luminance will hopefully fix a lot of the problems than just simply increasing the exposure. It's just gonna increase everything. And that's not necessarily what we want. We want to create a custom preset and this is the best way to do it. So what we're gonna do is go to our luminance here and we're gonna again leave red and orange alone skin tone colors, you're starting to get it guys. Let's go to yellow and let's go and increase that by 35. Then we're gonna to go to greens here and we're gonna increase that by 70. Then we're gonna to go to aquas, we're gonna drop that down by minus 10. And then we're gonna to go to blues here and we're gonna drop that down by minus 20. And as you can see, that made a really big change. And we can do the rest, leave the rest alone. So what we're gonna do is go to our HSL color. If I just simply toggle that specific area off and on again, it has made a really good look. Now, what you can do, if you wanna go for more of an extreme look, go to the yellows and go to the greens and even increase those even further. What I might do in this particular case, and increase yellow to 60 and green to 70, but that is quite extreme. I wouldn't do that for most photos. So I'd recommend maybe 50 and 70 in this particular case, or 35 and 70, but anything more than that is going to look quite extreme. But I do like it for this specific photo. Now what you can do is go into color grading, go to the highlights here, making sure we've selected highlights, no others, go to orange and just add in a tiny amount of orange because what it can do sometimes is it can wash out some of the skin tones. So this will hopefully bring back a little bit of that color that was lost in the skin tones. But again, because we didn't affect red and we didn't affect orange, hopefully your skin tones aren't necessarily affected because we wouldn't want that in a wedding photo or a portrait photo, for example. Skin tones that look off, and just immediately gonna ruin the photo, I think. So making sure the skin tones are correct in every photo is really, really important. And what we can do is turn off color grading. And the last thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and drop down to lens correction. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on remove chromatic aberration and also turn on profile correction. This will help out, especially if you've got any distortion, vignetting or any chromatic aberration in your photos. I'd always make sure that is turned on, especially if you are shot raw. And the last thing, if you really want, we can go to our effects here, we can go to our post cropping vignette and we can add in a small amount of vignette. But for most totos, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this because again, we're creating a bright and airy look. We don't necessarily want a vignette. But for this specific example, I might add in a small vignette. But again, this is optional. And there we go, guys. As you can see, it's created this beautiful effect. Now, if I go ahead and toggle before, and after, and what I'm gonna do is go down to the button here where we can do a proof. And as you can see, the left-hand side is before and the right-hand side is after. And as you can say, it has made this beautiful, bright and airy color grading effect. And make sure, try this out and write it down in the comments below if this particular effect worked for you.